Hi again. This is my pleasure to contribute to the uh, honorary session of Artem Tabarou by presenting you this paper. As you notice, I changed my background to illustrate the fact that uh, we were supposed to be in Orlando this, this year. So the subject of the paper is application and adaptability of MAG stability computation for the modern immune reduction cell of extreme condition of low ECD. So this is a presentation of an image stability using MHD values, the code. And what's specific about uh, this paper is that we are concentrating on very low ACD situation. So I'm the, I'm the presenter, my uh, co-author, Valdez Boyarevich from uh, Greenwich University. He have done uh, most of the work, he have uh, done the runs, he have written most of the paper. So my contribution is to present this paper to you in this uh, session of uh, Alton Deborah. And if you have any question, that's my email. Okay, so the uh, presentation is structure. Uh, we have a short introduction. We will present first the steady state solution of, uh, of a cell, or in fact, two cells, we'll cover that later. And after that, we will present um, the uh, most important, the transient analysis that uh, you use to, to detect if it's a prediction of stability or instability. There's three type of uh, instability analysis, transient instability analysis. Uh, the first type is a classic uh, where you recompute, you don't recompute the magnetic field and you have a whole boundary, set of boundary condition where you don't generate a dome shape because you don't have open channels in your boundary condition. And the new boundary condition that was established uh, about a bit more than 10 years ago, then you, you can, you will get the dome shape because of the, uh, the, of the new boundary condition with open channels. And then uh, the last set is uh, where you recompute the magnetic field during the transient analysis and with the new boundary condition that generate a dome sheet and some conclusion. So, so the introduction is that uh, we, uh, now that we are generating a very good bus bar uh, that producing fairly stable cell, uh, we are we can operate at very low ECD, but operating at very low ECD is more challenging for the uh, for the um, the solver. So here we have uh, introduced with this paper uh, a new version of the medieval disk that can cope with a very low ECD situation uh, with a new parameter. That parameter is not much described in the paper. It's uh, so we have to uh, refer to the uh, user manual. It's not very important uh, what was changed, but what is important is that now the code can cope with the low ECD situation. And we will present some example of that uh, here. Uh, two case will be presented, two, uh, two cell case, the, a generic cell, that is the one that we are using since 2004, and uh, a commercial application that we cannot describe much, but it is one of our clients. It's 500 kilograms, so that's all we can say about it. So this is the generic uh, bus bar layout. So the design was established by uh, in 2004 to illustrate the example of a native uh, So we have here on the on the left picture we have the color coding is based on the solution of the amperage in the conductor. And then uh, on the right, uh, it is the temperature of the conductor that is calculated, but well, both are calculated as part of the established a bus bar network. You, you, you solve for the, uh, uh, the solution of the current uh, in, in, the, in the bus bar and you get the current density in the bus bar and in the metal pad. Here we are, it's for illustration of the bus bar layout. And so this is the generic cell, and then this is the commercial cell. So we don't see much uh, on purpose. It is uh, a commercial cell that is uh, 
been developed and it is operating. So we will compare the result obtained by the two cells. In the paper, there's only the result of the generic cell and not all the results I'm going to present here. Some new results are added in the presentation. Okay, so the first set of results is uh, the current density and by component. So if you will look at this picture here, we have the, uh, the axis. So the X direction is the uh, long direction of the cell. The Y direction is the direction of the plot line. Positive Y is a downstream direction. So here it is the current density in the X direction. So the long direction is a plot shell. And for the two situation, the, uh, the generic cell here and the commercial side cell here. That is a bit longer, nine, so nine meter. Nine meter each size, so 18 meter total for the pot shell or the inside dimension of the liquid zone to be more specific. So this is uh, the, the Y direction, uh, current density, so the transverse current density. It is more intense uh, in the generic cell. And the reason why it is there's less ledge uh, in the perimeter of the cell compared to this one. That explains also why they were a bit more GX because there's more ledge in the other cell. And the third part is the current vertical current density in the metal pan. Again, here we can see the effect of having more ledge on the solution here, more intense and further away from the edge of the liquid zone. So that's the three component of the current density that you get uh, by solving the, the net electrical network. You can see also, uh, it is not so obvious, but uh, that uh, the commercial cell is better designed in terms of current pickup is more uniform. So you don't have a region of uh, more intense collection of current in some of the collector bar that are produced by the fact that you you don't have a perfectly well balanced uh, bus bar network here for the current pickup. Okay, so that's the current density. Then the magnetic field, magnetic field three components. So that's the X direction, the long direction here. And this is for the generic cell on top in the commercial down here, similar solution. Uh, more intense uh, in the uh, commercial, the generic cell because of the riser are closer to the metal pad. Similar PY, same scale, so we can compare directly. Uh, the, so, more uniform globally here and a bit more less dense in the corner here. And finally, the, the vertical common, the most important component for stability analysis. And here we are presenting only the generic cell mm -hmm. and at two, two uh, height. So the bottom of the metal is the surface of the cathode and the top of the metal is the bat metal interface. You can see that uh, the further away you are from the from the, the, the bottom, the less magnetic field you get. It's one of the reasons why I think more metal pad is helping in the stability. Not only you get less horizontal current, but you also get on average less BZ because of that vertical gradient. The code is using both solutions. So for his uh, flow calculation is the uh, Lawrence force and everything is, is using both uh, those solutions. And then for the uh, commercial cell, you have a more uniform BZ. Again, showing that more effort has been put into the design of the bug bar. Uh, but the same gradient. So the scale is different 
showing a little more more intense in the in the corner here at the surface of the cathode or the bottom the metal part. So those are the the B the BZ for the gummers for 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 the steady state. And now we present results that are not in the paper. They are the bat metal deformation and flow for here the bat flow and here the metal flow for the situation where you don't have open channels, so you don't have the, the dome shaped bat metal interface. It's obvious you can see here. So you have a very small deformation and uh, mostly controlled by the flow. So you have the dip here of the interface at the middle of the recirculation. And here you can appreciate also the difference between the bat flow and the metal flow. And the bat flow obviously is only based on the Lorentz force in the bat, not due to the bubble. So it's a, another ca characteristic of the MHD code. They only account for the uh, Lorentz force. So it's, that's the bat flow according to the Lorentz force. The bat metal interf uh, deform uh, interface deformation is the artificial because the boundary conditions are with closed channels. So no, no, no way for the bat to escape. It's uh, the pressure is different. Well, if you open the channel, you get a very different solution as we can see next. So here on top is the same generic cell, but this time with open channel. The friction coefficient is, is also defined here, it's important. The friction coefficient is in the, the shallow water uh, 2D flow uh, formulation. The, the friction of the bottom is uh, dictated by this coefficient. So 0 0.02 is a very low value for the friction. 0 0.06 will be a high, higher value or highest high value. And 0 0.04 will be a typical average value. You get the, you validate the, your model by doing a squeeze test. Uh, if you have a, a real cell, you do a squeeze test on it. And you, uh, cal you calibrate your friction coefficient so that the prediction of the code match the observation of the squeeze test. So here we are assuming the friction coefficient. It is assumed to be a low value of 0 0.02 for this solution here. So this is on top the generic cell and you can see you have more bat metal deformation, interface deformation or more hump or dome shape uh, with the generic cell compared to the uh, commercial cell. And you can see also because uh, the scale is the same, not quite the same. So we you could call a code the flow to see which which one of the two is more intense. But uh, so, so that's the solution for the two kids. So this summarizes the steady state situation that is the starting point of the transient analysis. But uh, up to now, you you can have a preference for one of the two design, but you don't really know which one is more stable. And you will not, you cannot really compare the stability or assess the stability only by the steady state solution. You could still do a fair amount of design only with that part, but where the uh, addition of the transient analysis gives you an absolute criteria for stability. Once you have done the calibration of friction coefficient. Now, the issue about recalculating the magnetic field, here we have an example, we have a wave. So we have a, a strong deformation of the bat metal interface due to a wave. And we can see that we have a strong current going in that direction. So we have a, a extra current, horizontal current. And from those extra horizontal current, you get a different magnetic field especially the Z component, if you recalculate it every time step like it is done here. So this, of course, recalculating the magnetic field add a lot of computation to the, the, the solution, the recalculation of the solution. 
So it is, that's why it's an option to put it on or not. Or not. And you could, uh, we can see, we will see next, uh, you could uh, analyze uh, the stability with or without the computation. So it's a trade-off between speed of calculation and accuracy. And depending where you are in your design work, you can have a, a rough calculation for a rough initial bus bar layout, and then you refine your bus bar layout. And then you refine, of course, you are, when you reach the end of the design, then you, if you want to activate the most accurate uh, calculation. Okay, so this is the case for the generic cell, and this is the case for the commercial cell. So it's similar, you have a wave, and then you have, if you were going to compute the BZ, you have a very different BZ than the one from the steady state distribution. Now, now we will shift to transient analysis reporting full result. So we are here presenting the generic cell case. So this is the one in the paper. For the situation, we have no recalculation of uh, the magnetic field and no open channel, so no dome shape. And we have, uh, you, so you run the simulation for 1000 seconds with a time step of 0 0.25 uh, seconds. That's mean you have 4000 time step for this run. And even if it's a 2D shallow uh, water formulation, uh, you're not recomputing the magnetic field once uh, you've computed the steady state situation. You are near computing the, the current density in your in the flow, the bat metal interface, mostly. Uh, it's a run that uh, on a typical computer will take uh, 12 to 24 hours to reach uh, the full uh, 1000 time step, uh, second or 4000 time step. And here you have three solutions. So we have done this three times at three value of ACD and one value of friction coefficient 0 0.02 and you have a prediction of very stable cell the red curve here so a very fast damping so a critical damping where the wave you have created is lasting forever for the case of a three centimeter ecd and you can see on this sign here the for you spectrum analysis where you can have the dominating frequency of the wave and you can see that once you, you go from the red to the green, you have a shift of frequency. So the, the one that is uh, amplifying is, uh, is at that frequency here. Now, if you go from the, for the drink, so you go from a, a closed channel with no dome or bat metal at the deformation, major dome shape deformation, you go to a uh, new boundary condition where you have an uh, open channel. So with the dome shape, those results are not in the paper. Oh, they are? I think, yeah, they are no. Uh, the, um, you, you, um, you have a prediction here that uh, we have, uh, before it was critical stability, now it is uh, at the past critical, so it is unstable. And what's a very significant is the shift of frequency. Now the, the frequency that is amplifying is completely different. So it's an indication that the, the, um, the rotating wave is a completely different one than the one from the, the previous uh, solution. But despite this, that is the steady state dome deformation is very different the prediction of stability are very similar. That's why the old scheme was working, even if the new scheme is better. Now, if you activate the recalculation of the, uh, the magnetic field, the situation changes very a lot. Now, the prediction is that at uh, 4 centimeter ECD, you have an unstable condition. At 4.5, we have a position of stability, but uh, not anymore at 4. Those results are the last one presented in the paper. And what's important in the paper is not specified, but the friction coefficient was 
kept the same all the time to 0 0.02. Now, if you we go back now to the uh, commercial cell where we are not presenting the results in the, in the paper, we were planning initially, but uh, not anymore. Uh, we have those results for the uh, initial setup. So fixed magnetic field, no open channel, and, and, and same friction coefficient of 0 0.02. The new parameter B, that is uh, the parameter added into the new code version, is, is, not, uh, is not in the... Um, uh, in the paper because it's not discussed. It is not activated because it's set to zero. So here we have a similar situation, but we have a condition of unstable cell at uh, three centimeters. And, and now the new result here, uh, we have, you have increased the friction to 0.04, but now we have activated the parameter P to be two. Uh, and now we can, as a solution at very low ECB. That was not the case in the older, old version before that update. Uh, and, and of course, to be able to get those, uh, those results, we have increased the friction to 0 0.04. So uh, and this is to illustrate that we can solve with a very low ECB. And there's no, no good value of friction coefficient at this point until we have a squeeze test. We don't know which is, is the best one, 0 0.02 or 0 0.04 or something else. So this is the result for the commercial cell at very low ECD with the usage of the new parameter P. So the conclusion is that uh, energy stability can be now done at very low ECD. And it is better to use the new boundary condition with open channels that get you the the hump shape, and and then now we can cope with very low ACD situation. Thank you very much for your attention.